What's up everybody, it's Coding Jesus, and today I wanted to talk to you about the do's and don'ts of a junior software engineer. So the do's and don'ts of being a junior software engineer. Now, the feedback that I'm gonna be giving you guys or the information that I'll be giving you is not only sourced from myself, but it's also sourced from my personal friends, people that I know online, and people that are of various seniority levels, right? So I'm gonna be giving you the perspective of a junior, but I've also talked to people that are more senior than me and kind of their perspectives about what a junior software engineer should or should not be doing. Okay, so you're gonna have kind of the whole 360 view as to the do's and don'ts of a junior software engineer. Okay, Coding Jesus, so you know, tell me the first point. What should I do or not do as a junior software engineer? Well, I think one of the biggest do is, especially when you're starting, make sure to get regular feedback from your boss or your manager. What I do is I set up quarterly meetings with my boss or my manager, and I tell them, you know, what did I do well? What do I need to improve on? Such that I can then iterate on the things that I don't need, that I, that I need to improve on, and continue doing the things that I already do well. That's very important, especially when you're starting out. I feel like a lot of people, they leave it up to their boss and if their boss says, you know, okay, I'm busy during, like we were supposed to meet, but I'm busy, they're not assertive enough. They don't push, okay? If your boss says that he's busy during a time where you need to meet with him, propose another time. If you were supposed to meet at Friday at 5 p.m., say, okay, how about Monday at 12 a.m.? Does that work for you? It's very important that you get your feedback, guys, and that you don't skimp out on this feedback. I think... A lot of people end up getting canned after a year and they're asking, uh, you know, why the hell am I getting canned? Why the hell am I getting canned? Buddy, you're a little too late, okay? You shouldn't be asking these questions when you get canned. You should be asking these questions before you get canned such that you don't get canned. If you feel like you're asking yourself these questions when you get canned or when you're fired, then you haven't been doing feedback right. It's both your responsibility and your manager's responsibility to make sure that you are receiving feedback. Okay. The second point that I think is important is that communication is critical. Okay. There's no such thing as dumb questions, especially when you're first starting. I think a lot of people, when they first start, they think they have to be a genius. And that's kind of my third point, the imposter syndrome. But that's not the case. Um, a lot of people, even senior software engineers, might be asking quote unquote dumb questions. Now, why would they be asking these quote unquote dumb questions? Well, a senior software engineer might have worked for three years on a certain part of the code base. And when he shifts to another part of the code base, he has no idea about concept X, Y, or Z, or what the purpose of this application is, or how it works, how to set up the application even, who it's used for, right? So these quote unquote dumb questions are only, only seem dumb to you because you've actually worked on this part of the code base that the senior software engineer hasn't, okay? So even people that are senior software engineers ask quote unquote dumb questions. Now, of course, every one of your questions should be well-researched. You shouldn't be asking a question like what's an increment operator, right? You can Google that. You shouldn't be asking a question like what's the null design pattern, right? You, you can Google that. So ask questions that are meaningful, but don't be afraid that these questions will come off as dumb. All right, I hinted to my third point already in my second point, but my third point really focuses around imposter syndrome. A lot of people, especially when they come from school, they feel like imposters. They feel like imposters because they feel like they don't know enough or they aren't good enough to join a team or work at a given organization. And realistically, or to be frank, an imposter syndrome is a syndrome that is self-imposed, right? It's a self-imposed limitation. You impose it on yourself and you can also de-impose it from yourself. And I think that de-imposition process involves getting regular feedback from your manager. So if you think you have some sort of weakness that you, know, you feel like you're an imposter for having, speak to your manager, ask him, hey, you know, am I doing okay? What can I improve on? What am I doing well? And slowly but surely you'll be seeing that you know, your self-imposed limitations, that imposter syndrome that you're giving to yourself is, is exactly that, it's self-imposed. You're most likely doing well, so you should calm down. You will be okay, okay? I think it was Epictetus that said, we often fear more in imagination than in reality. We often impose these limitations more in the little sessions that we have with ourselves. That's a what if, what if, am I doing okay, am I not doing okay, okay? We suffer more in imagination than in reality. The reality is you're most likely doing okay and speak to your manager to get that re reaffirmation. My fourth point is it's always important to continue learning. You are not done learning when you get your first job. In fact, learning only begins once you get your first job. Okay? It's very important to continue to learn, to continue to grow, to continue to thrive. Set times for yourself to read a book about C Sharp or C++ or whatever language you're using. Okay? And I'll give you a personal example. I bought a book, C Sharp 8 in a nutshell. I was lucky enough that my organization was able to buy it for me, so I didn't have to spend a dime. But anyways, I know most of, C -sharp, most of the C Sharp language features, but I'm particularly interested in C Sharp 8, right? So I'm reading about, for example, indexes and ranges, right? 
my organization is moving from .NET Standard 2.0 to .NET Core 3.1. So I want to make sure that I'm up to date with the latest and greatest in the C Sharp 8 language set. So I'm going ahead and taking time out of my day to learn more about C Sharp 8. That's just one example, right? You might be subscribed to Pluralsight.com and reading more about design patterns, right? You might be reading your own book about design patterns. You might be working on an open source project and helping solve bugs there. Regardless, you are still learning and learning is a integral part of being a junior software engineer. It doesn't stop when you get the job and that's also what I love about the job. You're constantly learning and you're constantly growing, okay? Another thing that I think is important is, or my fifth point here that I think is very important is don't cut corners. Oftentimes you're going to be reading code a lot more than you're writing code. So writing code that's clean and maintainable is very important. It's very important not only for other people, but for you because you might very well come back to a feature that you've written in two to three months time. And the worst thing that can happen is you ask yourself, what the hell is going on? Okay, if you can't understand your code in three months time, don't count on other people being able to understand it because you wrote it to begin with. That's very important. The last thing that I think I'll, is worth mentioning here is to go the extra mile. Now I know that sounds vague, but going the, and, and going the extra mile will be different for everybody else, but it's really important to go that extra mile. Okay, I'll give you an example from my own personal experience. I was working on a project that was quite nascent. Okay, it's been worked on by a couple of people and it's not a major project. It's only a kind of part of our code base. It sits there and it does X, Y, and Z, okay? And this co this, the code for this application was written in one or two classes that were tightly coupled and there was a lot of code in main, so the entry point of the application. Now, to me, as somebody that's going ahead and wanting to build a feature on this application, I could have taken the lazy approach and simply added some more static functions somewhere in the program class, you know, the entry point to a C-sharp application. Or I can go ahead and refactor this application, decoupling logic, making it more understandable for not only myself, but for future maintainers of the application. And that's exactly what I did. So before I built my feature, I submitted a merge request to refactor this project and clean it up. You know, my boss reviewed it. He added a comment, you know, comment in one or two places. I addressed those comments and you know, he said, good job, thanks for you know, refactoring it. He didn't tell me it's straight to my face, but I can tell that you know, he felt that way because you're gonna be reading code a lot more than you're writing it. And so you should go the extra mile and make those necessary changes if those necessary changes need to be made. Don't be lazy, don't cut corners and just simply add your feature. When it comes to being lazy, I also want to stress that it's important not to do the opposite. Don't overcomplicate things. Make sure things are simple. It's more important to make sure things are readable than complex. Okay, I think these points might seem contradictory to people. I mean, coding Jesus, you just said don't cut corners and you know, fix things up. But fixing things up doesn't involve making those things more complex. Okay, so go ahead and when you're writing code, don't strive to be fancy and over the top. Strive to make things simple, maintainable, readable, and clean. Okay guys, those are my tips for a junior software engineer. I hope you enjoyed them. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe. Join our Discord in the link in the description box below. I also have a Patreon if you wanna donate or contribute to this channel to contribute or tie to the Church of Coding Jesus. And I also have a Calendarly link below. I do one-on-one -on -one career and resume I would do one-on-one -on -one career coaching and mentoring and resume reviews. So if you'd like to check out those with me privately, one-on-one, -on -one, make sure to look at the Calendly link in the description box below, guys. Thanks for listening to this video once again, guys. Make sure to subscribe. Cheers.